We have talked a lot about <laughs> the Conservatives and, of course, the upcoming local elections, and probably will do for the remainder of the month, <laughs> and certainly in the aftermath of the local elections, it's not going to look good. Like, the local elections are not going to be good. Um, they will certainly be very, very lucky to retain, to retain any of their regional mayors. Um, I think only really um, Andy Street of the West Midlands mayor potentially has the only one of really hanging in there. Ben Houchen, honestly, looks like he's gone. And I've said how important I think that is out of, you know, next to the general election. I think the election of getting rid of Ben Houchen, finding out what's going on on the T-Sides Freeport, easily the most important thing really to look at. And that's why, you know, you've got to get rid of Ben Houchen if you want that to happen. So very, very important. We've talked about that before. But, of course, the massive loss of local councillors throughout the UK going to be absolutely, you know, cataclysmic. And as we've said before, when Tories are panicking, which ultimately these results will do, cause them to panic, they do not make good decisions. And believe it or not, me and Will, as you may remember from uh, Conservative Home, are in agreement on this. And Will is continuing his conservative midlife crisis um, in this, because I agree with him on this. It is obvious that in the disaster of that is going to be the local elections for the Conservatives, it is more than likely more than likely that there will be a vote of confidence in Sunak. Now, of course, whether he wins or loses on that, we don't know. Uh, he may not win it, which if he doesn't win it, that will go off and, you know, in one direction could result in a leadership contest, maybe going into a general election. There is also the possibility, maybe what happened to Boris Johnson, maybe he survives it. But, of course, you find out the majority of your party really isn't behind you. And, of course, that signaled eventually a death knell for Johnson just a couple of months later. Could the same thing happen to Sunak? It is very likely. May he call a general election after re after realising that? Who knows? <laughs> it's all up in the air and could almost happen, if anything, very, very quickly. So trust me, May the 3rd, going to be very, very interesting when all that kicks off, because uh, it is going to be very, very much the aftermath of the local elections. And of course, we'll bring you all the fun and games that happen in the aftermath. But in the meantime, let's go and have a look what Will's been saying about this, because I actually agree with him that there is, it is, it is more than obvious that there is going to be a general, a, a vote of confidence uh, after these local election results. But let's see what Will thinks about all this. So before we do go getting over into Will the Conservative Home, uh, please do uh, click on the like, the share button, and of course, do check out the Patreon page, the Buy Me Coffee link down below, where you can buy me coffee, the YouTube thank you button, and of course, the Pony Club down below as well. So let's crack on into Conservative Home. So this comes from our, our good, well, I say good friend, uh, the, our favourite tea boy over at the Conservative Home. Uh, brace for a vote of confidence in Sunak after the local elections. So, the remarkable thing about Simon Clark's January article calling for the Prime Minister's replacement was how much it was possible to nod along without even agreeing to its conclusion. If you remember, of course, Simon Clark came out, we have to get rid of Sunak now, it's the only option. Uh, caused a lot of panic, was part of the big move, probably by uh, heavily funded by the Conservative Democratic Organization to try and, you know, get rid of uh, get rid of Rishi Sunak. Um, but interesting fact that you've got Will here at least acknowledging, oh, it was really easy to nod, to nod along with, you know, I didn't agree with the conclusion. Really easy to nod, nod along with. Anyway, <coughs> he continues. The unvarnished truth, according to Clark, is that Rishi Sunak is leading the Conservatives into an election where we will be massacred. I would not disagree, he continued, if Nigel Farage returns to the fray, as it looks increasingly likely, extinction is a very real possibility for our party. Again, this is a judgment which our contributing editor 
ex was expressing only yesterday. It's amazing how that notion has not changed, but it is, of course, the continuing, the continuing notion that they're going to lose the next election, but they just don't know how by how much. And they are panicking. But when you see all these polls, <coughs> none of them get, are, are looking good. So, um, the George Lazenby of leveling up secretaries also fairly assessed Sunak's strengths and weaknesses. Few would doubt that the Prime Minister is on a, quote, descent into the core of fiercely intelligent that works formidably hard. But it is also true that he does not entirely get what Britain needs or what the British people want. Brexit and 2019 were votes for change, and Sunak can't and won't deliver. So, and again, <coughs> it is worth pointing out the change that Brexit sort of was meant to bring. They have not delivered. They have not promised on those. 2019, of course, levelling up, haven't delivered on any of those promises. We knew they were never going to deliver on any of those promises. But it's what people believed and, and thought that they would uh, deliver some form of, quote, change, whatever that change might have been. Uh, but anyway. Immigration has soared, our economy has stag uh, stagnated, and I hailed Clark's calls for, quote, a home-building mission in the best of conservative tradition to address the soaring house prices and rents. I agreed with his demands for tax reform, welfare reform, and planning reform, and many a conservative home reader will be amenable to Clark's demands for a clampdown on crime, protect our culture, or reform public services, except how were they going to do all these? Many of these were just ideas just thrown about in sheer desperation. Cut taxes. Okay, great. What are you going to cut taxes on? What What are you going to mean the government is not going to do anymore? What about the problems? How are you going to solve the massive deficit that might cause of the black hole? Are you going to go end up going full Theresa May again if you do these types of things? <laughs> you know, All these questions, all these things that they want to do, but don't have any ideas or even more apt policy to, you know, bring forward. And you can see this quite plainly in Parliament now. Parliament has all but slowed to a crawl, and it is a zombie Parliament just lurching on for, at this point, who knows what. <laughs> so, yet, despite that, I do not adhere to his core recommendation. That we need to, quote, change the Conservative leader to a Prime Minister who shares the instincts of, or shares the interests of the majority and is willing to lead the country in the right direction and will enable us to recover strongly in 2024. This is only partially because I remember the last Prime Minister that Clark recommended as tribute. And you see this a lot in Conservatives. Do we get rid of Rishi Sunak or do we keep him? This is the big question in like the conservative mindset at the moment. What do you do? Even if you change leader, there is a big movement that even, even among those who are now acknowledging, even if they want to change leader, that they are going to lose, but maybe they will lose less if they change leader now. And that is the hope by many of those wanting to change leader. Whether that will come true or not, I don't know. As I said, I, well, currently I'll probably be on my way back from Aberdeen uh, when I'm doing this. I will have a talk with my friend who is, again, into sort of the whole conservative stuff up there. I'll be having an interesting conversation with him or two uh, probably that weekend and come back with maybe some new thoughts, insights, and see what happens. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. Maybe I'll run into Alexander Salmond again. I don't know what it is when I go to Aberdeen. I always seem to run into, like, Alexander Salmond out of nowhere. He's like, what? Why? What happened? Why, why, why am I continually running into him? But anyway, uh, back to this. Um, so, back to this. So, where are we? Yes. Um, it is not that I do not think that it is a hypothetical, charismatic, or zeitgeist-chasing uh, Ubermensch or Uberfrau of a Prime Minister that could res rescue the Conservatives from the hole from which they are currently sunk. Boris Johnson took us from fifth to first place in a matter of months in 2019, forcing Tim Shipman to write yet another book, uh, which would uh, amuse me, but I do not believe in fairy tales. Um, of course, the book infamously was all about how Boris Johnson was going to be 
like the new Margaret Thatcher that it was going to guarantee at least like three more turns. Um, but you know, people forget what was going on in 2019. It was not just the Boris Johnson electoral magic. There was a ton of stuff going on and in at play during 2019. Uh, it was not all, you know, Boris Johnson entirely responsible for that. There was a ton of stuff that go on. Conservatives like to ignore all that <laughs> and just say, oh, it was just Boris Johnson. It was Boris Johnson and his wonderful election magic. But there you go. So, Removing and replacing a conservative leader is not a simple task, nor the uh, nor do you obviously uh, do you want to sort of assemble a, a sufficient pose pros of troops to try and willing to go over the top with you, something Clark lacked back in January. But you must also be careful what you are wishing for, as I find myself so often these days, as in these last few years of reli reliably proved things can always get worse. Yep. Uh, I agree with you there, Will. Things can and will always get worse. That is the entire motto, really, of the Conservative Party since the referendum. Things can always get worse. They hope that, oh, if we do this, things are going to get better. And if not, they've gotten infinitely worse. <laughs> infinitely worse. Uh, but there you go. So even if Sunak's opponents crossed the 52-letter margin of requirements of entries via uh, Graham Bradley's post box, they would have to uh, command a sufficient number of MPs to win a confidence vote in Sunak if he survived one. The examples of Theresa May and Boris Johnson would suggest that he would not last long. But even if he did re uh, resign uh, in a head-to-head -head of a well-earnest rest in Santa Monica, then he would find uh, would he find a leader capable of uniting MPs again? Um, absolutely not. No way. Uh, who who is it going to be? All the current leadership candidates all carry baggage, are all hated. There is no unity candidate at all. So the odds suggest not. I'm, I'm at least a we're in agreeable about that. A rebel uh, could at least hope for, say, Suella Braverman, and easily end up with Jeremy Hunt. Sunak's critics on the right cannot forget the 100 or so members of the One Nation group. Sunak's opponents might only hasten rather than for sale, the inevitable. Following a failed putsch, an embittered Sunak could easily call a sod you election and bring forward defeat just out of spite. And I said that at the beginning of this video. If that happens, I think Sunak might do that. But then again, that is something Sunak, we talked about Sunak potentially threatening. Could he threaten a general election? Of course, you only ever get to do that once. And you, if you do, You've sort of got to follow through with it. It is a threat you can only use once, and then that is it. It's a one-time threat. He's never used that, but maybe he does. Maybe he just gets fed up if he does have a, you know, a leadership election and or at least a vote of confidence, and he wins. He might very well do that. I would not put it past Rishi Sunak to do that. Of course, this is all utterly mad. <laughs> to which I say to Will, have you not? Uh, been following your own party for the past couple of years, um, they are completely, absolutely mad and would gladly probably do something like that. As I said, I would not put it past Rishi Sunak to do a sod you election. So the cabinet might say no to Sunak's demands. Could they actually stop him going to the palace? Could the king be called upon via the Lasalle's principles to refuse a dissolution? Even if an election did go ahead, would Sunak remove the whip from his opponents, preventing them from standing as Tory candidates as a final two-fingered salute? Would they hot-foot it to reform UK? Just how awful could the campaign be? Um, there is absolutely no way. If, if honestly, if Sunak did this, let's say he wanted to say, right, screw it, we're going for a general election, and his cabinet tried to stop him, there would be the biggest almighty public backlash against the Conservative Party for doing that. Like, that would just not be a good idea to do. Like, that would be the very definition of political madness. And bear in mind, I've just said, you know, well, the Conservative Party is already mad, but I do not believe that they would be that mad to try and do that. I do not believe that they would do. 
nor would I believe that the king would get involved and try and refuse a dissolution. I, I do not see that happening. But I can see the campaign being absolutely well and truly awful. And oh boy, I am there for that general election as well, because it's going to be bad. <laughs> anyway, questions upon questions, insanities upon insanities. Neither a leadership nor a general election are topics I hope to spend my summer writing about. Well, well, uh, you might find, uh, <laughs> you might find you may very well be in that position. But I look with increasing gloom at the upcoming local elections. The Tories look set to lose at least half their seats. Andy Street and Ben Houchen will be demonstrated from their northern fiefdoms. Susan Hall will usher in a third city Khan term. Number 10 and the Tories would inevitably fool themselves any longer. The polls would be right. Those MPs already not jumping ships into the local job centre would know that they would soon be unemployed. Chaos would reign. And oh, it will rain. <laughs> oh, it will. Trust me, after this, like, if you've ever been in the teaching sphere, you will know um, when you're writing reports. And you know it when, when you're young. You know that once your teacher has written your yearly report, all bets are off. After that, you can go and be as bad as you want. None of that's going to get reported to go back to your parents. So... It is it is chaos will indeed reign. I will agree with you there, Will. It will. And it is going to be glorious. <laughs> anyway, Sunak's authority uh, would be shot. Will, <laughs> Sunak has no authority now. Why would it be shot? Why would it be shot then? He has no authority now. It, this is why it would become a complete Lord of the Flies situation in Parliament. A, a Parliament we would have to refer to as almost beyond a zombie Parliament, creating something of the likes of which we have never seen before. And it is going to be a fun time. It's going to be a fun time for this channel. Uh, and I'm going to be here for it all the time. But there you go. Uh, probably the last... Um, vestiges of insanity before we get to a somewhat normal functioning parliament which is going to be so nice to have i'm not gonna lie it's going to be so nice <laughs> anyway um the devil of course would make work for idle hands and those 52 letter thresholds could very be swiftly reach Q bradley back on our televisions Pandora's box would open. The general public already demanding a general election to kick his, kick his lot out would be even more appalled. Even if, miraculously, a new leader of substance emerged, again, who that leader would be, uh, <laughs> who is your leader of substance? I'd love to know that. Uh, they would then lack the vote leave team, the Brexit raison d'etre, and of course, the benefit of doubt that blessed Johnson five years ago. There would be nowhere to run. And did someone mention zero seats? I, I doubt you're going to win zero seats, but there you go. Um, it was all it is all a very unhappy pro prospect, as I'm sure we all agree, but increasingly a likely one. Blood will have blood. And oh boy, are they ready for it. And it's not just that. I am ready for the after one. <laughs> I am ready, ready for that after one. Um, and of course, you've got all these stuff about, you know, <laughs> it is, honestly, uh, just, I'm ready for it. <laughs> I'm ready for it. It's going to be a fun summer. I can guarantee you that. It's going to be a very fun summer. Probably, maybe even the last such, like, Tory chaos we see. But this is what will round off 14 years of, of Tory rule in this country. This is what is going to be their final swan song. And as I've said, the bigger the defeat the more they are removed, the more that we have a very, very progressive parliament, 
that can get stuff done. And again, the hope is, the hope is, is that somehow I would love it to happen, but I will admit it's not exactly likely. If we got the Lib Dems to be like the party of opposition, I would love that. I would absolutely love that to happen. Uh, but again, it's very unlikely to happen. But as always, uh, thank you very much, of course, for watching. Thank you very much for, again, all the support you guys show. Hopefully, I'll be back from uh, from Aberdeen. Uh, of course, barring any delays, like I say, I'm traveling back on Monday. Um, so, yes, we will, we will see you tomorrow. But as always, thank you very much for watching. And of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.